So hello guys, um, I'm talking more about how to get the best output from your artwork files. So today I'm going to be talking about file naming conventions. Um, and what I mean by this is um, how you, the file names that you use for your artwork. Um, so the first point is to keep the length as short as possible. I'd say 20 to 30 characters, but definitely if you can, no more than 30 characters. Um, what can happen is if the file name is too long, um, it can cause the, the printing software to, to have a glitch um, and not be able to work with it. Um, and what the prepress person will have to do is, you know, when they if they manage to diagnose it, they're just going to have to go in and delete um, a lot of the characters that are in there. So try and keep it to less than 30 characters. You should be able to do it in 20. Um, so that's the first tip. The next one is use a descriptive name. And you know, what, what I mean by that is, if for example, say this was your artwork, um, you know, you might call it in your, in your naming convention, you might call it something like a B um, or B on a flower, um, or to, just trying to keep, um, because you're trying to keep the character length down, you might call it B underscore flower. Um, now the reason for this is when your your printers are working with it, they they're going to be working with this, and they're going to if the file name connects directly with what they're seeing, it makes a lot more sense to them, um, and they can work with it a lot better. So try and use a descriptive name. You know, I find typically customers they have they have a code, some kind of format like this that they use for their internal filing. Um, so this one here, for example. Um, would be the first three letters is an acronym for their customer and then it would be a date so this would be August and then the year 2018 and say the fifth job that they've done for this month um, and then you know you would put uh, B flower on there so that's a that works for, the, for you as a designer this is your thing and then this is we start working for the pre-press guys so the next thing is to put in the dimensions um, or if it's uh, if your artwork isn't at a hundred percent put a percentage so say you're doing a 30 by 40 poster um, you would say 750 by a thousand um, millimeters which is the dimensions but then maybe um, for whatever reason you've supplied the file at 50 percent size you would add 50% to the file name. Okay, and so this just means when they're pre-press guys, if they're working with the file, they know what they're working with, you know, they can cross-reference um, the file name with what they're actually producing, what they're seeing in their rip. Um, and if they need to change the size, then they know straight away, just again, just by looking at a file, that they need to double the size. You know, if you've set it up at 100% size, like there's no reason, there's no need to do that. Um, I'll just do that. And now the last tip here is quantity. Um, and that would be at the quantity. So uh, what you can do is add 2TY10. So again, um, this allows the pre-press guy to cross-reference with the file name what he's actually producing. So when the guys work in pre-press, they're... Uh, yeah. Oh, no, that's not on um, you know, they're working largely with file names and they'll have some kind of job bag or something that they're referencing. But if you can have everything in the file name, it makes their job a little bit easier. And it means that, again, like your output that you're going to get um, is going to be better and the chances of something going wrong are going to be less. So you can see this one's got a bit long. I'd say I'd probably just get rid of flower in this instance. And uh, so then that would be .pdf. And so that would be the file name that I think would be ideal. That would be press practice. So anyway, I hope this helps someone um, get better output from their digital artwork. Thank you.